And this one is going to take a little bit of a shift. We're, we're going from marine engineering into kind of the robotics agriculture realm, but we're still staying with additive manufacturing. Of course. So this one is uh, the subterranean drone that's combat combating food insecurity. Um, the team is called Crover. So um, Crover is coming out of Scotland, and it was started. The idea was formulated by Dr. Lorenzo Cody who came up with it during his doctorate research at the University of Edinburgh. So right now, Crover is a team of 25. They're a startup, and their entire goal is to build a robot that can traverse through bulk solids, so think anything that's like powdery or um, like sand and anything like that very efficiently and non-destructively. And the, 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 one, the first thing that they want to address is food insecurity. So that was kind of weird to me because like, I, yeah. I didn't really connect the two dots together at first, but let's let's just hop into it. This is gonna make more sense. So apparently in the world, there's this huge issue of grain storage. So people like farmers are harvesting their grains. Obviously not everyone needs that grain at that exact moment. So they have to store it. There's grain mm -hmm. silos, right? And what happens in these grain silos is that if the temperature and the moisture isn't monitored well, you can have infestations of bugs or they can be like growth of mold in different spots and your supply just goes bad. How much? Like, Great question. So we're looking at about 20 to 30% losses in most of the world and that bumps up to 50% in developing countries. Goodness gracious. So imagine half of all the grain that's harvested just becomes trash every year. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm coming from a you know hardware manufacturing background thinking you know if you had a manufacturing process where your yield was 50 percent you know you put all these resources and time into money into building things and you have to throw half of them out i'd be saying we'd have to take a serious look at this manufacturing process because we're just burning Absolutely. money here we're burning resources this is super inefficient and here we're not just burning money and resources we're burning you know critical food supply in developing countries absolutely and the number that like was the cherry on top for me is that every year we're, use, we're losing 631 million tons of grains. Oh my gosh. So that, like at a glance, that's already horrifying. But then you think about the land that had to be, you know, um, aerated and the seeds that had to be planted and the hours that had to be worked and the time it took for these crops to grow just for them to be wasted because the storage was inadequate. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem? Why is this happening? And it really comes down to the fact that monitoring those parameters is not easy. If you have grain silos, you know, you, you could have sensors at the top that are monitoring the temperature at the top, but that doesn't really give you insight about what's going on in the middle or at the bottom. So then... It sounds like you probably need something that can dig non-destructively through a pile of powdery materials. I know. It would be great if there was some kind of solution that could do that. Am I right? <laughs> But yeah, you're absolutely right. And j just as a side note, if you want to do more of an in-depth analysis of, of the storage facilities, they have to use a human to like stand on top of the grain. And that, I, I, don't, I don't think I need to tell you how dangerous that can be. Yeah. So it can lead to like, you know, life-threatening accidents or, or like, you know, yeah, not good, not great. Yeah. This is like perfect for a robotic solution. And that's what this team has been working on. So like the robotic solution is called Crover. Um, it, it has this patented design. I'm going to do my best to describe it. But think like, um, you know, those hollow point bullets that that are not just a cone, but they have like sides, uh, mm -hmm. like almost fins. They got fins yeah. around them. So imagine a robot that looks like an egg that has two of those on, on the bottom and the top, and they're both actu actuated with independent motors that can spin either way. And that's kind of what it is. It's, it's, it just looks like that. It has an umbilical that comes out so that you can feed it into the silo. It digs by itself, and the different rotations allow it to maneuver um, omnidirectionally without really breaking anything apart. Yeah, So the, the, the umbilical, this is coming from, you and I both tried to do, you know, the robot projects for our, our capstone projects in college um, where, you know, we, we thought about not using an umbilical, trying to make it uh, wireless, you know, putting all the communications, putting all the power, power supply on there and everything. Then we realized how useful having an umbilical is, right? Absolutely. Basically unlimited power. Cause you're not confined with space. You can have it sitting in a, you know, a huge backpack sitting in a 
you know, back of a truck somewhere um, with all the, you know, batteries in it. Communications are hardwired. You don't have to worry about losing Bluetooth connection with this thing when it digs through a couple of stories worth of grain. And then if something goes wrong, you can just use the umbilical to pull it out. Absolutely. You hit it right on the head. You're right. And uh, what I love about this thing is that it can move all throughout this grain silo and it has these temperature sensors on board and it can give you a 3D map of the exact conditions that it's seeing. So it'll go to the bottom, it'll come back up top, it'll maneuver around, the operator can move it however really they want. Cool. And it can do this in, in, a, in a fashion that's much safer to the human beings that would be doing this otherwise. And it actually moves pretty quickly. I, I don't think they really give a timestamp of how long it takes for it to traverse through the entire, like an average grain silo. But from the videos I was looking at, it moves really quickly. Yeah, um, and it, it to, to some extent, it doesn't really matter how long it takes, right? There's no way safely for people to currently do this today. So you're providing a solution that doesn't yet exist. There's no competition. Obviously, they're going to try to make it as fast as possible. Mm-hmm you know, as a robust solution as they can. But what they're doing is, you know, huge breakthrough here um, on making something new that, you know, solve a problem that's not really been solved well before. I, I got a question for you, though. You sure. Know, this episode's all about 3D printing for us. Where was the additive manufacturing? Where does that mix into their secret sauce with this thing? You know, what are they 3D printing and how does it, how is it, you know, making their solution this much better? Sure. So, um all of their products so far, they've been doing proof of concepts. They've been 3D printing it because the shape is kind of complex and that's the best way for them to make a complex shape without breaking the bank. And um, it gives them flexibility in terms of changing the design on the go as they, as they need to make adjustments. But the next thing I had is like, what, what's, you know, the so what, what have they accomplished? What does the future look like? They actually competed in the challenge that was hosted by Weevolver and uh, Mitsubishi's MCAM. That's... You and I are familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and they won. They were the winners of this competition. So they got a grant, which which is going to allow them to work with these uh, composite materials that are going to be very stable at high temperature or extreme temperature conditions. Which, again, you might be wondering, well, why? Like, are grain silos really like extreme temperature conditions? The answer is no. But that's not really what where Crover's stopping. Crover's future is actually um, looking up to the stars. And what I mean by that is one of the things they want to do with, with this robot is explore the lunar and Martian surfaces. Because it can go, I, I forgot what the material is called. It's not like sand or powder. But it's, apparently it's really good in their analysis and simulation for digging through and exploring in a non-destructive fashion, which would give uh, the astronomers a lot of insight about the surface conditions. So much so that in 2019, they actually joined the European Space Agency's incubator, which gave them some of the uh, fuel they needed to keep this uh, innovation going. Now, I, I wanna take a step back real quick and talk about the grain silo application. Dan, you mentioned that the speed doesn't really matter right now because there really is no other solution. Mm -hmm. And you're right, because if it can, save some of these grains, that's really all that matters and keep people safe, right? Yeah. Here's their promise. The average grain silo can save approximately 30,000 US dollars every year worth of crops or grains if they use a Crover. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And that is, I, I feel like that just like sells itself. I, I'd be like, I am totally on board. If we're, if we're losing 631 million metric tons a year, then this is a no-brainer. Yeah. And what if I, I'm the average grain silo owner, I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. And, um, you know, we always talk about how we love great ideas, but we really love great ideas that become something that's commercially viable. So um, I, I talked about how Dr. Lorenzo Cody, he, he, had, he formulated this idea during his PhD and then there's the startup was formulated and then they competed in TechCrunch, by the way. So you know we're tech nerds, we like TechCrunch. Uh, they competed in TechCrunch, and now in 2022, they are planning to release their first commercial product. So the summer of this year, that we will see Crovers being deployed. That's pretty cool. And yeah, super cool. It, it, it has it just took so many like twists and turns for me, because at the beginning I was confused about food insecurity. Then I was confused about why would they want a composite material that works in extreme conditions. But that's just because Crover is just a really cool robot that yeah, does well, so many things well. This really humbled me 
Because when you first started talking about it, right, I drew the conclusion to our capstone projects in, in college, right? Yours went a little further than mine. Like, you guys won your competition. You, you know, were have a pending patent and all this stuff. Um, my solution didn't even work that well. But, you know, I was drawing some analogies, right? Umbilical robot, doing 3D mapping of an area that's inaccessible to humans. This is projects that both you and I worked on. But this team, um, you know, took that to the max, right? This super exactly. talented team, 25, based out of Scotland. I'm hearing all these buzzwords like European Space Agency incubator, uh, startup battlefield at TechCrunch, winning the Weevolver and MCAM competition. Um, these are like, I really, really admire this team for what they've achieved so far. And I'm really, really looking forward to the impact that their solution is going to make in the world. I, I, I'm so with you. As I was reading this and I, I was watching their TechCrunch um battlefield video that they had and i was like this is so cool like they they're really doing it this is the dream you come up with a great idea and then you work with a talented team to make it happen i'm rooting for them i'm so excited to hear more about what they do and how they leverage this mcam grant and uh yeah let's combat some food insecurity and explore the lunar surfaces yeah it, it's crazy to me all that a robot to non-destructively dig through powdery materials can do and i'm looking forward to seeing what they do for sure.